You ready? Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. <laughs> if you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please do. And when you do, please tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. Which we got to get back on track to happening faster because I'm missing working in the garage. I love doing this stuff. But trying to get going and and today I went to the doctor and the doctor said okay that right eye is done we can do the left one now Yay! and we'll call you very soon with your next appointment so that's where I'm at now so that's where we're at that's the way it is but I do have my knucklehead apart and I have been uh, well the heads are out getting some work done to them Yay. And that front head seemed to have been the problem, and we'll see what really transpires. I'm really not sure yet. But what I did do is I said, well, if I'm going to take the heads off, I've gone that far. And the way everything was leaking, I formed an awful lot of carbon. So I pulled the cylinders and pistons and cleaned them up and got a new set of rings. And we're going to go over that a little bit here. Um, I scrubbed these pistons to within an inch of their life. They are 30 thousandths over pistons, which makes me feel real fortunate that these cylinders have only been bored out to 30 over. Goody. So I'll get more life out of them. I will get a lot of life. I will run these for years. And I have a brand new pair stashed too. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but that's how that works. So I cleaned them up and I got a set of, of I wanted to put a good set of modern rings in it. Um, piston rings are, are a very, very involved science. I know we think of them as just being this thing you put in there and, and it works and, and that's basically it except that the manufacturers over the years have just gone all out with piston rings and gotten better and better and better. And when you think about today's modern cars or motorcycles and the kind of miles we get out of a set of piston rings it's just amazing so using modern piston rings is a really nice thing to do so what I did is I ordered a set and I got them and of course measured the cylinders made sure everything is within spec and I have my knucklehead service manual here so that I can look at all these specs but Anyway, here we go. Here is the top piston ring. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to be sure that it's what it's supposed to be. Now, in the book, I think the measurements are all in the book as far as what the pistons are supposed to be. Yes, they are. And I have a micrometer out here. And all this is labeled on the manufacturer's package. So here we go. What is the thickness of that piston ring, the top ring? And it should be about 62 thousandths. And I measure it with my micrometer, which may not be exactly dead on, but it's, well, it's not very far off. I, you know, you, you should set them every once in a while. Yeah. And, 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 and this is a beautiful set I have here. And it shows it at, uh, at 62 thousandths, which is what it is. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. The other thing is, when you look at your service manual, it also gives you the side clearance. In other words, if this piston ring were on this piston, what would the, the clearance be between the piston ring and the groove? Mm -hmm. And so we have that, and that's something we check with a feeler gauge. And I think, is this the right gauge? I think, anyway, I did check them. I'm trying to remember what the, the side play is. Piston pin and piston, man, piston, piston ring gap, okay. And here we have Side clearance and grooves, four thousandths. Okay, so we'll take this here piston ring and we'll 
put it into that groove and then we'll put a a feeler gauge in there there's three it's just four which is right on which is what is the specification now you can do all this stuff without checking it but it sure is nice to close something up and know that you just checked everything out and everything is within specification and it's cool Amen. and so that's what we try to do so we did that and the next thing is going to be I did ball hone the cylinders now I don't remember now what the uh, the actual mm -hmm, how much clearance I had in those pistons but they are proper take my word for it <laughs> and uh, well I don't have my uh, dial bore gauge here you at the house we made a video about that once before didn't we I don't think so Do my dial bore gauge is on loan and it still hasn't come back anyway but I did take it over and mic it so I know they're sure I'm sure that it's within spec anyway so I took my ball hone where is my ball hone which I do on an electric drill and here is a ball hone and this is I think about a 280 grit and what you do is you put that thing in the electric drill And you get that cylinder all wet with whatever kind of oil you choose to use. Light oil, right? Yes, yeah, something very light. And you go in and out with it. And what you're doing is you're matching speeds with the rotation of it, and you're pushing it in and out. And what you're trying to get in there, in a perfect world, is about a 60-degree crosshatch. Now, I don't know if you can see that cr those crosshatches in there or not. Yeah, it's ooh, not ooh, real. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I'm getting Okay, some. now these aren't perfect bores. There's some scratches in there. They aren't perfect, but they're close. They're good enough. They're really good. It's, they're going to seat, and today's piston ring seat right now, and it's really nice. So the next thing is... Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Why? Why what? Why do you put scratch hatches, scratch hatches in it? Cross hatches in it? Yes. <laughs> okay, because oil travels in those grooves. I'm sorry, I didn't mention it. There are things that I forget to say, so thank you for that. Um, the oil, that's why we now make steeper cross hatching than we used to. Yeah. They used to be 40, everyone did them 45 degrees now, and now it's up to 60 degrees. And, and the guys that run NASCAR, they'll tell you that. And the reason being, because you want the oil to travel up and down in those in those grooves mm. anyway but there it is and it's a good job it looks good to me and I'm the one who's going to be riding it so I'm the one that matters that's how that works so this is a ring from the from this is a top ring from the package of new rings okay and this is a rear piston this is the rear cylinder so what I'm going to do so I'm going to get myself a little sandwich bag out of here. And I had a pen laying right here somewhere. There it is. Okay. So the piston ring I'm doing is a top rear. Okay. That's the best I could do. I can't remember my mic's back hurts. Well, that's what happens when you work for a living. Okay. And I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this piston ring in now, and I'm going to push it into the bore. Now, the, see these white paper towels and this alcohol here? This bore is clean. I have just wiped it and wiped it and wiped it. And I feel it's important that I say that so you know that, because I'm going to bag all this stuff up, and before I put it all together, it's going to get washed again and again. Okay, now what you want to do when you put the ring into the, into the uh, cylinder, we can set this about an inch or something like that. And what we want to do, oh, it doesn't need to be that much, probably three quarters. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to get this this thing set in here real nice and we want to set it below where the uh, what do you call it <laughs> piston well where the piston comes up and at top the dead center no the top of the the bore okay where the piston doesn't come that far oh okay there is a ridge that builds up here Oh, okay. okay, now that ridge, which I've of course honed off of there, yeah. but, but at the bottom of that ridge is the biggest part of the bore when it's worn. Okay, because here's this piston coming up with rings on it and it comes up to the top and, and stops and reverses direction. Uh -huh. Okay, when it gets up there to the top, that's how far that ring went. When you pull a, the head off and you can see this bunch of junk that's on deposited here, uh -huh. what that is is carbon where the rings didn't hit it. Uh -huh. But right below that bunch of carbon is where the biggest part of the wear is. Okay? Because the rings are stopped right there. They just push right up there to the top. So right up there. So you want to be below that when you're measuring for your rings. Okay. So I went below that. And you can see the way I did it. I just took this little uh, machinist uh, rule, little six inch rule, uh -huh. and I went below where that ridge would, would, would end. Okay. Okay, then we're going to get the, the, the we're going to get into that, into that groove there, and we're going to set that. This is the end gap. Oh, okay. Okay, now the end gap, and I'm having real fun with my uh, book here. Um, can I cross the piston ring gap? 10 to 20 thousandths. Now these are old, old Harley specs. Mm -hmm. So if I go in here with a feeler gauge, there's 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now everybody has their preferences. And it also depends a lot on where you live and how much heat this thing is subjected to. Mm -hmm. But I like to make, living in Southern California, uh -huh. doing a lot of desert riding and all that sort of thing, I like things to be set up a little bit loose. A little looser than when I lived at the beach up north. Okay, so... I get, I get it to be about 11 or 12 thousandths, which is fine. They say 10 to 20. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to about 13 or 14. Now, nice. the reason I'm doing that is because I want these end ends of the rings to be finished smooth. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here we have a ring gapping tool. Did, did you say 10 to 20? Yes, 10 to 20 is what the book calls out. And you're going... Now, we're talking about a book that was printed in 1930-something. Mm -hmm. And those motors all burned lots of oil. Mm. That was normal. In fact, they, you know, they'll say, I don't remember what the spec is, but if you read, even in the owner's manual, they'll say, a quart in 500 miles is not a big deal. Wow. Well, that's the way it was in those days. Uh -huh. That's, you know, plus it was a total loss on the primary. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, and here we are today, and we've got all these cute little machines that are just as clean as can be. Okay, now here we go okay. on this. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Doesn't take much. And boy, that is just beautiful. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Can you want to see the shiny ends? Yeah. See that? Oh, yeah, there it is. Ooh, blinded me. Okay. So now we're going to put it back in there, mm -hmm. and we're going to see what we got. And I'll be able to put it right down where it was before. And we'll see what that gap is. Okay, here is 12. Okay, 
and there is 13. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. okay. Back to what I was saying. And that was just, that is just fine. That is. Yeah. That's 10, 10, 10 thousands. 10, 10 thousand spacing. And right. you only touched two, two, ten, uh, two thousands. Yeah, I took two thousands off I mean, of it. You're not work. getting sloppy at all. You barely. Well, no, barely I took two thousands off of it. But when we're talking about a motor, uh -huh. a thousandth is a thousandth. You know, Junior and I used to argue a lot when he'd be grinding or cutting something on the mill and we'd be looking at something and looking at it and he says, well, I don't know if I should take more off it. I said, well, it's only standing up three thousandths. And he'd say, how do you know it's three thousandths? I'd put my thumb on it and I'd say, that's three thousandths. Then he'd <laughs> measure it and be three thousandths. We'd argue about it. And, you know, we used to bet ice cream cones on that a lot. Yeah. But that's, uh, you know, it, it's... That's kind of the beauty of this old stuff. It's not just a strict measurement. It's what you think is adequate, what you think works well for you, what you enjoy. Um, you know, I, I was over at a buddy's house and he was a, a tremendously wonderful machinist. There was three of us there and he fitted a bearing into this Harley, into the motor. I don't remember which bearing it was even. And all three of us felt it to give our opinion on what we thought. And when we finally got it there, it was interesting. I don't remember what the measurement was, but we all agreed that this was the perfect measurement. It felt perfect. And that's kind of the way it is. And you do it enough for enough years and you get that way. Yeah. And I, you know, I'll check this again. Yeah. And it'll probably end up my usual, believe it or not, on these old bikes, I usually do about a 14,000 gap in them. <laughs> you know, it's right about there. But that is the top one. And again, that's the top rear ring. I'm not putting it in the motor yet. So it's going in the sandwich bag. I'm going to be very careful with it and put it in there. Now I also have a tool for spreading, for spreading these rings and putting them on here. In fact, I think I got it out the other day and showed it to you. Yes, if you, you did. If you hang on a second, I'm going to go get it. I never saw you put it away. Let me see where it is. I thought it was neat. I remember playing with one of those like a kid. Well, yeah, well. Here it is. You know, it's... You know, reading all the literature is a real good practice. In other words, I read all these specifications that Harley gave me, and then I'm going to take all these specifications off the rings, and I've got all the how to do it's and everything, and that's the way we're going to do it. And then that way, you don't make mistakes that way. Okay, now, they tell you they want you to do it like this. Now, I've put rings on. I usually get frustrated, to be honest with you, and put them on with my fingers. And I really don't care that my fingers are pretty well cut up at the end of the day. But here it is. And you can put it on like that. Okay? Now, the reason you're doing that is because if you try to put it on and wind it around, mm. you're risking twisting it. Oh. Now, a twist, again, we're talking thousands. Mm -hmm. So you're not even going to see a couple thousands twist in it. But you did it. Yep. And it's there. So you have been forewarned. And these, when you squeeze them. Yeah, you adjust them so you can't go too far. That's all. Oh, okay. See, if you do this adjustment right here. Okay, now go ahead and squeeze it. It stops. It stops. Right. Okay, so you don't want to you don't want to twist a ring. You don't want to expand it too far. You want to expand it just far enough yeah. to get it onto that piston. That's pretty neat. Yeah. There's yeah. But there it is. And so that's the top ring. The middle ring is the same thing. Uh, the bottom ring is of course three rings. The oil ring. Yeah. The oil. That's your your oil. And there's an expander that goes with that. 
And uh, I guess we could look at that real quick. Could I have that pair of scissors over there? It's right there. What, you can't handle the camera and the scissors yeah. and, and everything else at the same time? Beating you up. Uh, well, you know. Okay, it's so. It's funny, you get a day, a day off of work for labor, but you spend all week making up for it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Okay, these are the expanders. And these are the, whoops, these are the rails. So you will have two rails and... Uh, oh, that's that, yeah, that wavy one. Let me back up a second, I'll get a picture of it. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. Okay. All right. And see, we will do these rails. I was going to ask you about that. Even the way yes. you want to do it? Now, well, you look at it and make sure that it fits the way you want it to. It will. And what is the way you want it to? It just butts up in there. It's not a, it's not a big, uh, okay. it's not, not really confusing. And when you look at it, it's real understandable. And that's what we're going to do. And then I'll be able to put the pistons in, get the cylinders on. In fact, when I get those pistons in, we will put the cylinders on, get that done in another video. I'm not going to sit here and size all these rings. So we're going to be doing that in one of our next videos. And then hopefully I'll get the, the heads back pretty soon. What are we pointing at? Oh, I see what it is. Guess what's coming up? El Camino Vintage Motorcycle Show on Swap Meet. And there is the event card I went and snagged off the dining room wall. Okay, and it says, Saturday, September 30th, 2023, and that's at El Camino College in Torrance, California, and this is a really great vintage swap meet, just like they say it is, and it's been around for I don't know how many years, and it stopped for a while like all these other things. And the people that care about it and are running it are doing it, and they're doing it very well. And, you know, people come from this swap meet to this one in, in, in Torrance. I always see old friends from San Francisco and all over the place. People will be there. So by all means, you want to see that one. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is these are our shirts. And that's about it for now, I think. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Okay. So. So I think that's about it for now. And I want to get all of this stuff caught up. We're getting there. They're going to do my other eye and everything's going to be wonderful. So until then, let's see. I think we're going to be in Idlewild tomorrow. So until then, I'll see you out on the road. <laughs>